Welcome to Small Business Celebration. We're continuing our series on small business sustainability. And our guest this week, well, this is an esports business where the sport is deeper than the business. This is Small Business Celebration. Welcome, where we're celebrating small businesses for big breakthroughs. Welcome to Small Business Celebration, and our guest this week is Jason Maples, the owner of the Bakersfield Esports Center. Welcome to Small Business Celebration. Thank you so much. It's great to be here. And for visionaries who don't know who you are, who are you, and what is it that you do? My name is Jason Maples, and I own Bakersfield Esports Center. The reason we're talking with Jason today is because not only is he the owner of Bakersfield Esports Center, but he also owns a Papa John's franchise. But before you did that, you owned a different kind of a gaming shop, didn't you? I did. I used to own Extreme Games, and we had locations in Oildale, and we had one on Coffee and Hageman. And what kind of a store was it? So we sold like video games, uh, accessories, consoles, all that kind of stuff. Anything for gaming, we had it. And you had this business for, what happened? Did, did, was it just something that became, the building became rat infested or something and you closed the shop? <laughs> <laughs> or or what, what, what happened to it? That whole industry, it shifted to, instead of going to the store and buying your video games and buying everything, it shifted to everything was online, uh, everything was download play. Right. Yeah. And you saw the writing on the wall as it were. We did, actually. We used to go to a conference called E3, mm -hmm. and every time we'd go to E3, you kind of saw it going that direction, and so that's when we were like, okay, well, let's shift our focus onto something else. And that's exactly what you did. You mm -hmm. shifted your focus onto something else, and what was that? That was Papa John's. So at that point, we were like, we had owned different businesses. Right. This time we were like, you know, let's, let's do a restaurant. We researched and found pizza was pretty, like, standard for everyone it didn't matter whether you were a vegetarian or or what you were you most people ate pizza and so we went that direction we could help churches and schools and all that kind of stuff you do realize that one of the first pieces of business advice that everybody knows is never own a restaurant <laughs> that yes <laughs> yes and after almost 11 years we're learning <laughs> And yet, your love of gaming never went away. We went through a time with Papa John's to where uh, Papa John's was kind of on a little bit of a downslide. Right. And uh, through a lot of prayer, uh, talking to God about like what we were supposed to do, what his plan was for our lives. Right. He woke me up at 3 o'clock in the morning and showed me this vision of this place. But was your wife supportive at 3 <laughs> o'clock in the morning? <laughs> You know, I, I, that is a great question. And she was asleep and I didn't bother her. And I was researching and researching and researching what God had shown me. Right. And, you know, I was like like a, like a kid with a pot of coffee. Right. And so by the time she wakes up, 8 or 9 o'clock, I am just spun. Hey, we need to research esports. We need to do this. We need to do that. We need to do this. And she's going, I just need a cup of coffee. <laughs> and you said, I'm on my 12th. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. I'm on the second pot. <laughs> and, and yet, having the vision and the inspiration, divine intervention, as it were. Absolutely. Is one thing. Making it happen is something else. Now, first of all, where did you get this location? Because this is not in downtown. Where are we? So we're kind of north, almost northwest, but north. Like, okay. if you're in Rosedale, right. we're like a two-minute drive. Okay. If you're in Oildale, we're a two-minute drive. If you're in the southwest and, and other areas of town, we're right off the freeway. Why here? So that's kind of an interesting story, <laughs> sure. and, and uh, my commercial real estate guy would have a lot of fun with this one. <laughs> because and I, who is your commercial real estate guy? Because we need to give him credit for, for helping you find this place. Josh Shirley. Of, Josh Shirley. Of what? Uh, well, of Cushman Wakefield at the time. Okay. Yeah, and Scott Reynolds. I, Scott Reynolds and, and Josh both came together to, to make this place happen for okay. us, and I appreciate both of them. What was the journey like getting here? So, so that's, the, that's the greatest question because through a lot of prayer, we would find a location. And every time we applied for a different location, they liked our assets, they liked our credit, everything was great. They just didn't see the vision for the business. 
So every time I would call Josh and Josh would say, I've got good news and I got bad news. <laughs> and every time I'd say, well, let's start with the bad news. Right. The landlord said no. Oh, okay. Well, what's the good news? Well, God has another place in mind. <laughs> and I'm all like, where's that? And he's like, we got to go find it. So it was, a, it was a fun journey. And then we saw this place, 5,000 square feet, a little over an acre of land for parking and everything else and stuff. And it's just us. And it's like, it just right near Snow Road on Golden State, right near Fruitvale. It was perfect. Now, for those of us who are novices, explain to us how an eSports Center works. Because, you know, when I think of an eSports Center, I'm thinking of like E as an elliptical. Okay. You know? Okay. <laughs> and, okay. And explain to us how this works, because is this really just a closet full of computers where people just sit around and, and you know, look at, you know, internet stuff all day? No. So eSports stands for electronic sports. Okay. It's kids that are competing and adults that are competing in games and they're competing against other people. And some of these guys that are doing this, they're making millions. They've got jerseys and everything. And right. Stuff. For us, like, I have always struggled with the eSports name because of the fact that it's a giant gaming facility too. Uh, so even if you want to casually come and play games, you can come in here and chill. It's, it's cool in the summertime, and it's warm in the wintertime. So it's perfect all seasons. And when you say other games, you're also talking about board games as well. Yeah, we're talking about board games, card games. TCG players come in. Uh, they have tournaments multiple times during the week. Um, we have computer uh, gaming tournaments. We have consoles that people can play. We have virtual reality stations. We even have an infinity table. And if you don't know what that is, look it up and then come in and check it out. It's amazing. One of the things that you also do here is if you've got a business that wants to have a unique experience for your holiday party, you shut down the place for them. We do, actually. We've shut it down for quite a few organizations, uh -huh. nonprofits. We even, Texas Roadhouse came in and wanted us to use the building just for their team. And they brought their management team, their, their developmental team in. And we closed the place down. And they had a great time playing, fellowshipping, doing the VR station. We even do nonprofits. We've done like the Bakersfield Angels for foster care kids. We've done the Kern Autism Network and, and the Diabetes Association. We have done so many nonprofits. We even had... Uh, uh, Shannon Grove, the senator, came and gave us a resolution thanking us for what we've done for nonprofits. It's crazy. In the next segment, we're going to talk about that problem that a lot of business owners have, especially when they're in growth mode, which is, I know where I'm going. I know I, what I need to have to make that happen. I have no idea how I'm going to make it happen at all which Jason has personal experience from. So we'll talk about that more in the next segment. But before we do that, if visionaries want to get in touch with you, Jason, how do they do that? You know, they can go to our website, which is BakersfieldEsports.com. Mm -hmm. They can call us at the center. They could even email me personally at Jason at BakersfieldEsports.com. And if you enjoy Small Business Celebration, go ahead and like, subscribe, and notify. And when we come back, we're going to talk about planning for a future that you hope you can attain. When we come, Right back. The winter season is rapidly approaching, but are the tires on your car or truck ready for wet weather? Bakersfield's best tire store, Claro Tire, has been serving families like yours for 80 years and installs and services the tires your family depends on when the wet weather comes. Give Claro Tire a call at 661-324-6069 and ask them about what tire works best for you and your budget. Call Claro Tire at 661-324-6069 or visit them at 530 East 21st Street in Bakersfield or at clarotire.com today. The wet winter weather is rapidly approaching. Call Claro Tire at 661-324-6069 today. I'm here with Jason Maples, the owner of the Bakersfield eSports Center, and our visionary question comes from Garrett who asks, we're looking to move to a new location. We have a vision of what we want to accomplish, but how do you prepare for the things you need when you're not so sure on how you're going to get them? Such a great question. So it all comes into planning. And so our planning got so much, we were filling notebook after notebook on everything, even 
what kind of monitors we wanted. Mm. And that turned into week-long discussions because we wanted everything perfect. Okay. And so we were making so many lists that we ended up getting iPads with a notability <laughs> app <laughs> because we were taking so many notes and we could, you know, and then you get to the point where you're like, where is that note? Right. So sure. a lot of good planning. But as you did that, this also gave you a really good idea of when the opportunity arose, yeah, I want that and not that. Walk us through why that's so important to have that ability to discern what's important. You know, for us when it came to that is, is that we wanted the whole experience to be an amazing experience for them. Mm. And so because of that, it's like everything from, do you do a curved monitor or a flat monitor? What's right. the difference and what's the advantages? Do you want hard drives in the computers or do you want them just in the server? Everything was about customer experience. As many of you visioneers know, one of the things that I do is I like to have a pre-conversation conversation with the guest. and. When I first came into this location to have that conversation, there was an experience that I saw that was truly unique and important. And Jason said, this happens all the time. What happened? What, what happened was the kid comes in with mom mm -hmm. and they come in and they're just blown away by the place. They can, I'm explaining, giving them a tour, explaining they can sit anywhere they want. They can order food through the computers. They can play all these games that we have on there. Right. Um, and what blew me away about it was when we first opened, I thought, well, the first person that comes in would sit in computer number one right. and somebody would sit back computer number 40 and then the right. next person would come in. And I thought, you know, everybody likes their space. You know, you put right. into a parking lot. Right, right. You want to park with nobody around you. Right. Sure. So I thought the same thing. That is not what happens here. Really? You, oh, once one sits down, one will sit near them and then they all start to congregate in one row. And before you know it, they're all playing together, laughing together, having fun. It is just a great experience. Tell me about Penny. What happened was I, I had a customer come in and she has a son that's on the spectrum. Okay. What happened with it is, is that, you know, he gets bullied, he gets picked on, he doesn't have a lot of friends. Socialization isn't real easy. Right. Coming in here, it opened the avenue for that because a lot of the kids that come in here are like that mm. and so when they come in and even the kids that are in their bedroom playing alone and they're playing online with friends or whatnot and stuff right this gets them all out of that mode right puts them in here they're still playing online against people that they play against or with right but they're also playing with friends next to each other and socializing and and penny just she loves this scenario she loves this place because of what it's done for her son did you foresee any of this happening when you opened up this business? No, I didn't realize that, like the true depth that what this place would do. Mm. You know, so many people look at it and it's just a video gaming place or whatever. Right. But what it teaches and what it encourages with these kids and what these kids normally, they just gravitate to here is that socialization is that playing together you know being around each other and laughing at a game and and yelling and you know cheering each other on that i didn't expect as much or as depth that it would go when we come back we're going to talk about how bakersfield esports center is taking the business to the next level and you can't do that alone you need community support to do that, which we'll talk about when we come right back. The reason I'm talking with Jason Maples, the owner of Bakersfield Esports Center, is because of a visioneer question that came from a visioneer just like you. We had a visioneer that wanted to find out, you know, how do you plan for the unplannable? So if you've got a question, you've got a thought, something you'd like to learn about here on Small Business Celebration, reach out to us through our social media pages on LinkedIn, Facebook, and Instagram. Let us know your thoughts, something that you'd like to learn about here on Small Business Celebration, and who knows, your question could appear here on Small Business Celebration. So reach out to us on LinkedIn, Facebook, and Instagram today. I'm here with Jason Maples, the owner of Bakersfield Esports Center, and our visionary question comes from Jessica who asks, we have several services we want our business to provide, but we need revenue to do them. How do you get community partners to help? So what we did is we created a, a deck 
that introduced community partners to our business mm -hmm. and what it is we do and where we're going and what we're doing with it. And what does this deck look like? Because when I think of deck, I think about the thing that's out my back door in the porch that's made of wood. It's got great furniture on it. I don't <laughs> think that's what you're talking about. No, nah, kind of more like a PowerPoint. Okay. And, and some people print them up. Some people, like I, take them on my iPad. Right. So if I'm going to talk to somebody, like Valley Strong, one of our big partners, right. I have that deck that I can email to them or I can go up to them and say, hey, look, this is what we're doing. Why do you need these community partners? There's so many programs we're providing, not just the gaming. We had Fairfax School District come and use our facility okay. for one of their programs. Right. And what it was, was it was a, a lot of it was STEM involved. Okay. And so STEM education, obviously this is a given for this place. Right, and for those of us that don't know what STEM is, STEM st stands for? STEM stands for Science, Technology, Engineering, and Mathematics. Lots of computers definitely falls into that category. <laughs> yes. So we have STEM training. We have STEM education. Um, when they approached us, it was all about Lego mm -hmm. and engineering through okay. Legos. Right. And yeah. so that was easy for us to do with the game. We can, we can set up a program where they can create their own video games. We can teach them all about computers and how to take them apart, what each part does. We can take them and do a whole engineering program. So it, it really, like we're able to reach beyond just gaming itself. What project are you working on now? We're working on getting in with the schools to have that STEM program year round. Oh, very yes. good. When you're not here, what do you like to do for fun? You know, my family's really tight. Okay. And so if we're not involved in church or not doing a church activity, right. we love to travel. We love to camp. We love to do those kind of things where we uh, get out of the heat. <laughs> sure, <laughs> sure. Yeah, and go enjoy ourselves. What has traveling taught you that you apply to your business? When you're traveling and you're somewhere else, you're in another city and stuff, mm. you are the consumer. Ah. And so going into any location, you see what works and what doesn't work. And sometimes I get so excited about something that worked that I'll even call my guys from the beach or from the mountains and go, hey, we need to talk about this when I get back because this was phenomenal. What book do you like to gift? So there's a book called Crazy Love by Francis Chan. Okay. I love to gift that book okay. um, because it changed my prayer life. How so? Um, in that book, one of the first chapters, he talks about stop praying. Mm -hmm. And literally what he's talking about is stop praying to God with your laundry list of things that you want, like he's a magic genie. Right. And some point in that, just be quiet and listen to what God has to say to you. Does this have anything to do with the reason you're able to make that laundry list? of things you needed for your business. Was it, did you learn this because of that book? You're a smart guy. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. Like, um, you know, if anybody's gonna help keep you on track, no one beats God. What business book do you like to recommend or gift? The E-Myth. Okay. And what it talks about is it's the entrepreneurial myth. Mm. Like there's a story in the book that talks about uh, a lady that loves to bake cakes. Mm -hmm. She loves to bake cakes. Right. So what she does is she decides to open a bakery. Right. Because she loves to bake cakes. She's not a businesswoman. Uh, but she's a baker. Right. So what she says is, is that she opens this bakery. She hires someone to run the front end for her, hire all the staff, run all the staff and everything else and stuff. What happens when that person leaves? So the e-myth talks about creating a system for your business. So if someone leaves, the system doesn't break down. You just have another person come in and fill that void. What makes you wake up every morning and open your business? You know, that's, that's a good question because you're going to have ups and downs throughout this. Mm. You're going to have times that are rough and times that are great. Mm. And for me, I'm always looking ahead. You've got to look into the future. You've got to remember that what you're building is for tomorrow. And so anything that confronts you today, just always think about where you're traveling to. Jason, 
This has been a real privilege. Thank you for joining us here on Small Business Celebration. Thank you for having me. It's been such a pleasure. If visionaries want to get in touch with you, Jason, how do they do that? You know, they can go to our website, which is Bakersfieldesports.com. Mm -hmm. They can call us at the center. They could even email me personally at Jason at Bakersfieldesports.com. And I'll be right back with my final thought. The winter season is rapidly approaching, but are the tires on your car or truck ready for wet weather? Bakersfield's best tire store, Clareau Tire, has been serving families like yours for 80 years and installs and services the tires your family depends on when the wet weather comes. Give Clareau Tire a call at 661-324-6069 and ask them about what tire works best for you and your budget. Call Clareau Tire at 661-324-6069 or visit them at 530 East 21st Street in Bakersfield or at ClareauTire.com today. The wet winter weather is rapidly approaching. Call Clareau Tire at 661-324-6069 today. For me. One of the stories that ended up on the cutting room floor due to time constraints with my conversation with Jason Maples was his story of the display cases. Now, if you may recall, Jason was trying to get his business open just as the COVID restrictions were being lifted and the inside of his business is painted solid black. And the reason for that is because it makes for a much better gaming experience for his customers. And his customers also like their accessories, knickknacks, snacks, and drinks and the like. And Jason wanted to have display cases to showcase those items for sale. He also wanted those cases to be black to match everything else. And every supplier he called said, Jason, we don't have any. And after a while, you kind of get the feeling just like he did. He started asking himself, why is this happening to me? He would call supplier after supplier and say, hey, can you get me a display case? And at this point, I don't care what color it is. Just get me a display case. And the supplier would say, sorry, Jason, we don't have any. To which Jason would think, why is this happening to me? Well, as time got closer and closer to the opening, one fateful day, he got a call from one of his suppliers that said, Jason, you're never going to believe this. We just had a couple pallets of display cases come in, and the pallet was too high to fit into the truck, so they had to take a couple off the top. And you'll never guess what color they are. Yes, Jason got his black display cases. And his reaction to, through all this is one that a lot of us business owners have. We sit there and we wonder, why are all these things happening to me? I mean, it's, I didn't deserve any of this. Why are they happening to me? When in reality, when you connect the dots of finding the right building in the right place that was the right size, when you find that he got all the computers that he needed and the right number of them, when you find out and realize that not only did he get the display cases that he needed and the right color, everything started to come together. And why? Well, when he opened his business and his customers started coming in, some of those customers were on the spectrum of autism and they would look around the room, survey the room, and instead of parking themselves in the far-flung reaches of the room, they started joining up with other like-minded people, and they started building community. The question isn't why is this happening to me, but for me. I hope you enjoyed our conversation with Jason Maples, the owner of Bakersfield Esports Center, and I hope you learned something that you can use today to grow a strong and profitable business. And we'll see you here again next week when we celebrate another small business making a big breakthrough. How do you know that there's a big party for a gamer? How okay, how? There are lots and lots of streamers. <laughs> That's pretty good. No, there we go. There I we like go. That. Okay, uh, I'll let's see. Uh, <laughs> um, oh, oh, how does a gamer make bread? Hmm. 
How does a big gamer make bread? With Nintendo. <laughs> Not bad. <laughs> wah, 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 wah. Wah. Well, I couldn't say Papa John's dough because you know that's just yeah. um, it doesn't kind of fitting, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Nintendo does, however. <laughs> so. That's right. That's right. Perfect. <laughs> Shall we? Let's do this. All right. Welcome to Small Business Celebration, and our guest this week. Is